Hey there everybody at Mission Control. Alright, well tonight we're going to continue the flashback series and we're actually going to look at the uh, construction of the grow lanes themselves. So this would be the shelving and the fish tank. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so here we are and uh, we got the tractor. We're digging these lanes. Some of you if you've watched the previous videos, you know that uh, we got this tractor borrowed. It has the backhoe on it. Uh, ran some string out and made sure that I dug everything right along the string to uh, keep the lanes as uh, straight as possible. That was hugely important. Um, this is a rock that was right in the middle of one of the lanes and this is a big deal because I can't dig it out. It's so big. Uh, that if I did dig it out, I'd compromise the integrity of the grow lane, and that would make the grow. I, I wouldn't be able to put the shelving up. So uh, we're going to see some of that come back. But here are all the grow lanes, nice and dug. There's that rock. Now I'm going to actually spend. I think it's uh, like eight hours. It took me with a jackhammer, uh, sitting there and just slowly chipping away at this thing. Um, buddy of mine allowed me to borrow the jackhammer thank you appreciate it and I sat there and just chipped away chipped away chipped away I was vibrating uh, uh, all day long I think I was vibrating for like a few days afterwards uh, slight exaggeration there but you know what I mean that thing shook you pretty good and you just literally had to spend all the time just finding the right nook and cranny to get into in order to get this rock out of there uh, but as the pictures show, you know, resistance was futile. Uh, it slowly started to get chipped away, just one little section at a time. Uh, this is, like I said, a really big deal. We got to get this rock out of the way without uh, hurting the dirt that's around it uh, because we got to put pond liner in here and maintain the integrity of the, um, the walls so that when the shelving goes up, which sit to the side of this giant trench, the shelving won't fall down into the hole. So yeah, lots of digging here. Uh, you can see some of the dirt actually did fall in. I, I had to get the pond liner in there and backfill that particular area. That area is just to the left of where that uh, jackhammer is sitting right now. But you can see what, what was once a rock in the lane is now a bunch of little rocks outside of the lane. So uh, we were able to make it all the way through all of it. Well, that was a lot of work. That was a whole lot of work doing all that. Okay, so here we are now looking at uh, the lane and what you're seeing is that red and blue pipe. That's PEX piping and that's actually used as radiant heat that comes from the heating system of the building uh, that's heated by the digester when the digester is running. It just runs hot water underneath of all the fish tanks to keep the fish tanks nice and warm. And each of those fish tanks is down three feet into the ground. Um, if I put them deeper, that would be even better, but three feet, we're going to get fairly constant temperature right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. Yeah, so that PEX line is uh, pretty important uh, to making sure that uh, those fish lanes, the fish tanks stay uh, decently warm. Now, trout, the nice thing about trout, one of the reasons we chose them is they're cold water. They, they don't need to have warm water. So 45 to 54 degrees is a really perfect temperature for them. Yeah, more of the PEX piping here. I was running some of the PEX out to um, birthing units. Okay, here we go. Uh, those birthing units were for the trout. This is the pond liner. So this is, I think it's EPDM pond liner. I got it from halfoffponds.com. Uh, and all you had to do was get it all laid down, cut it to the right size. Uh, and then we got it down in the hole and the, what we're doing is we're putting the water in now to help actually create more structural integrity because that's a lot of weight. Uh, I actually did the calculation but I forget off the top of my head is quite a few thousand pounds of force that were pushing against the walls of the grow lanes of, of the fish tanks excuse me that help keep everything in place so that water is a key piece of the structural integrity. And you can see the shelving going up here. This is pallet rack shelving. It can hold thousands of pounds of weight, which we have. So that's why we chose to go with it. You can get this stuff used. Uh, here we are putting the pond liner into the other grow lane, grow lane three, getting it all set up. Uh, the Putting the pond liner in wasn't that hard, actually. Just getting it in and then getting the rocks on it, holding it in place. I was able to do it all by myself. Uh, so not a huge problem. And here we go, getting the next set of lanes up. Again, you can do a lot of this yourself if you have a ladder and a few things to hold things with, but it's certainly better if it's a two-person job. 
there it is it's fun to go back and watch these things just so much work uh, it we were able to get the pond liner and the shelving all put in in one day and one day's worth of work to get that much stuff done it really I, th I think that's pretty good it was nice being able to look back that day at the end crack open a cold one and sit there and go yeah we got her all done it, it's when it really starts getting real when you see these things happen now uh, if you can see in that picture right there and, and pretty much all of these um, the footing for these things I ended up putting two by sixes underneath each of the footings and we're gonna actually have another video coming up in the future where I'm going to talk about why that's important uh, and why it's also one of my biggest mistakes a lot of you out there have already pointed it out uh, we're going to talk about that I would definitely uh, for those considering doing a project like this putting the fish tanks in the ground is the way to go period uh, that's the best place to do it um, saves the most space uh, very cost efficient very energy efficient but you need to do it differently than what I did here and we're going to talk about that. It's a pretty big mistake that I didn't do a better job on the footings and we've been able to deal with it and I have since retrofitted some footings underneath of everything uh, I got a video coming up where you'll see the fun of retrofitting something uh, it's not that fun uh, and it's kind of laughable actually uh, in hindsight but we're doing all right right now um, I would definitely do cement on the bottom uh, for the footings, and it's really a matter of how much cement and where would you put it at. For example, uh, would you want to replace the entire pond liner with cement, uh, or would you like to just do pilings in certain places where you can go like get deck pilings, for example, and uh, put those in place and have them sit down in the dirt a little bit, or would it be better if you did cement right where uh, the shelving is going to be in its place would be better if you just put a, a rail of shelving basically around the entire top like a, a giant rectangle those are all questions that i'm going to kind of be digging into as part of uh, phase three because we have to put lanes one and lane four in if, if you haven't watched those videos please go back and check them out uh so uh, very curious of some thoughts there you're going to see some more videos but that's it for tonight. I uh, just wanted to go over. It's a pretty quick video. Just get you, here's how we put everything together. It's pretty nice. Uh, it's really cool to go back and see these uh, flashback series videos. Uh, lots of pictures, lots of memories, lots of hard work. We made it a long way. Uh, we did all this in a year, so I think that's pretty cool. Uh, but man, we have so much more to do, and I'm constantly thinking of all these things that I have to do and feeling like I haven't done good enough yet. So we're going to keep pushing on and uh, fighting the good fight. In the meantime, thanks everybody for following along. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to be notified of uh, future videos, hit that little bell to the left to subscribe and you'll get a notification. In the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Everybody have a good night. Out.